lot of movies are going to have to approach the day when they're not shot on film anymore. That's going to happen. The manipulations that that allows you now with dealing with the digital technology are endless and effortless. And uh, I think some of the stuff we're doing in this, in terms of the big stunt effects sequences, are only going to be a precursor to what is going to follow in the next generation of Bond movies. The high-end action sequences that are done for real are still going to exist, but I think that it's going to be half of them will exist for real and half of them will be augmented with. And sometimes we'll, they may move into entirely digital special effects that way. He's been very adventurous on this film. Uh, and I think that was, I'm pretty sure that was a conscious decision, that he wanted to take Bond into this millennium in terms of technology. And we've certainly done that, you know. It, it is the first Bond where we've used major league CG. The script changed from its, from its very first uh, incarnation, but, but one sequence that remained right from the very beginning was the ice wave and I could see immediately there was going to be a great deal of, of digital visual effects involvement. By far the most unnerving stuff was Bond hanging off an ice wall in a world that didn't exist, which is a computer generated world. That's, that kind of really sent a lot of us into paroxysms of fear, if you will. My part in it is actually pretty minimal. Hanging Pierce on certain rigs and against blue screens was very easy. The tough part comes in the back end of this once we have to start putting the rest of it in and, and making it real because it will either stand or fall on whether the stuff works or not. We very quickly set up a team, a CG team, doing R&D on water and ice, which this particular team had some experience of from, from other movies, Perfect Storm and various other films, but um, the way that we were going to use both the water and the ice was totally different and new and uh, quite cutting edge, especially for a Bond film. You know, Bond films obviously have the reputation for doing as much as possible, absolutely for real. And this suddenly was an environment that we were going to create that was totally synthetic. I went with a very small aerial team up to Spitsbergen and shot all the material for the cliffs and the ice, which was an incredible shoot. I mean just amazing. The amount of effort that's gone into that very tiny sequence is quite astonishing. One of the biggest challenges of, of the ice wave was that we were, there was nowhere to hide in terms of the look. We were in broad daylight, full sunshine, and we had to create a totally CG environment which consisted entirely of ice, very difficult, water, quite difficult. That was a tremendous challenge. So here we have the, the final sequence of the ice wave. Fully rendered in CG environment, uh, fully rendered in some cases CG bond, blue screen bond. Again. CG ice, CG water. And, and various live action elements. It started life as a very basic animatic, which Mark has got here, just to block out the storyboard frames. The beam cuts the ice cliff off, ice cliff falls and creates the, the wave that Bond is going to surf on. And there's a lot more shots in this uh, animatic than ended up in the final sequence. It's been cut down, rearranged, um, as, as it's evolved. That top shot doesn't exist anymore. Very basic CG geometry, easy, you know, quick, easy to change, easy to re-render. We knew we still had to do close-ups of Pierce, so uh, we tested a camera rig and, and a rig for, for Pierce to be shot on a blue screen. We shot a lot of elements, uh, some of which have been used for interaction, for Bond's interaction with the water, and also because uh, floating in the water and being carried with the wave are huge icebergs and those icebergs obviously have to in interact with the water as well so spray foam 
splashes, every kind of interaction we actually shot as elements out at Pinewood. Some of those have been used and some of them have been recreated as, as CG. I think what Cineside have achieved in terms of the level of reality is extraordinary, both with the ice and with the water. But all those things have taken basically a year to, to develop. The finished result is that you believe that those icebergs are sitting suspended in that water. Each iceberg, depending on its size, has a certain weight and you can feel the volume and you can see the base of the iceberg through the water and through the interaction. And it really is quite stupendous. I think one of the things that I'm particularly proud of that, that is almost a throwaway thing is the satellite. The design of it I love um, and the concept um, of the satellite works really well. You only see it a few times and it's usually in the course of an action sequence. But if you actually look at the object itself and how it works, it's a combination of a miniature that was shot motion control and some very, very beautiful computer-generated elements as well. It's, it's a very beautiful thing. I'm very happy with the, the satellite. The other sequence which emerged uh, soon after we started shooting was the end sequence, the Antonov sequence which, by virtue of the fact that it's all airborne, was going to be major league visual effects. And we had a 12th scale uh, miniature of the entire plane. Because the Antonov is such a tremendously big aircraft, at 12th scale, the wingspan of that model was still approximately 20 feet across. It was all shot with a motion control rig linked to a model mover on a green screen stage. So the Antonov goes into the Icarus beam and gets pretty well torched. So we cut to the exterior of the Antonov and it's gradually disintegrating. So it's been shot in, in separate passes with various levels of disintegration. So the model unit as they were shooting, as, as they were shooting it gradually stripped back panels on the model to simulate the damage. There's a pass just for the lights on the plane. There's a pass for tracking, so that we can, we've got the movement of the plane. The computer can, can take the, the, the move out of the, um, extract the camera move from the film using the tracking markers. We should have a beauty pass against black. And these are built up as layers to give the final result. There is a CG plane in there, but it's only, it's an invisible model. It's a very rough model that we've used as a collision model uh, to wrap smoke and flame around, you know, for the culmination of, of the whole destruction of, of the Antonov, because all the smoke and flame in that sequence is computer generated. So you have to have an object or a virtual object to wrap all that around. So there's an invisible CG component in there as well. But it's basically, it's, it's, it's miniature.